think you'll be alone forever. I suggest you take your medicine. You look kind of fat anyways. Who here online dates? Tinder, Bumble, Plenty of Fish? Do any of these messages sound familiar? Have you received anything like this? Have you sent anything like this? Online dating's fun, but it's not all right swipes and happily ever afters. Big boobs, but boring as fuck. Did you guys hear that? Anyway, it was about three years ago when, after receiving what seemed like the millionth terrible message, I decided that something had to change. I knew that I couldn't take this abuse anymore. There was something that had to happen. I decided, what if I could take these insults and provocations and recontextualize them into something that was personally gratifying, but also universally relatable? What if I didn't let these insults define me, but empower me? Don't be so dramatic. So I turned to my art and design background and started combining that with the different messages I had been receiving and started creating artwork. It was extremely cathartic and really more satisfying than I thought it was going to be. Um, before long, though, I started noticing some patterns, certain message, messages that I would get. Um, if I didn't reply, I was a stuck-up bitch. But if I did reply but wasn't interested, I was also a stuck-up bitch. Um, there are, of course, the categories of insults that range from sexual to derogatory to downright hostile. And then there were some common traits, I'll call them character flaws, in the common offenders that I've encountered. So through this whole journey, I've developed some archetypes of the different types of offenders I've encountered through my online dating journey and the artwork that they have inspired. First, we have the gaslighter. You're a little bit crazy. So a gaslighter will try to make you feel like you don't know what you're talking about or that your perception of reality is not really what happened. This usually happens when you tell them you're not interested or that their incessant messages are making you feel uncomfortable. They're going to make you feel like you're doing something wrong and that you're the crazy one. Never listen to them. The sexual harasser. I'd tear that butt up. So that's one of my favorites. It is funny, but sexual harassment is a huge issue, and just because it happens in the digital space does not mean that it is not violating or impactful. It can range from uh, language such as this all the way to the infamous unsolicited dick pic, um, of which I also have a series, but I didn't feel it was appropriate to share. <laughs> Next up, we have the toxic antagonizer. The only value you have would be to lie still and take it. So this one takes a serious turn. Um, this, this guy is really based on the concept of toxic masculinity in which our culture um, adheres traditional male gender roles to men and boys, meaning they are taught not to express themselves, they can't show emotion, it's about being hostile, aggressive, um, alpha male. And I found that it manifests itself in messages um, that are really downright disgusting and violent, such as this, to lie still and take it. Next, we have the age shamer. You need to get off your pedestal. One day you'll wake up and realize you're old. So you can really substitute any word for age. It can be weight, appearance, religion, any type of shamer. Um, this is kind of like the reptile brain knee-jerk reaction to somebody being rejected, is what I found. In my case, it was age. Um, as you can see in the artwork, it's golden fruit on a pedestal, and slowly the fruit will decay. Um, such as youth, and I've also discovered that a lot of men in these dating apps and in general equate a woman's value with her youth, and I just find that um, incredibly interesting and saddening. Next, we have the nice guy. I'm a really nice guy. I know you're not seeing that from the way I text. But I'm really a nice guy. But I'm a nice guy. There's so many of them. So. Tons of nice guys. The thing is, as soon as you tell a nice guy you're not interested, they're no longer a nice guy. It's pretty easy to flush them out. You just have to say you're not interested, and the air goes out of their balloon. But I'm a nice guy. Next, we have the projector. You must be eating tons of carbs. 
So that guy actually was British, and I can guarantee you that he himself is eating tons of carbs. The projector will say something to you that they are probably insecure about themselves. Um, in this case, he picked on me for what he thought looked like I was eating a bunch of donuts, I guess. Next, we have Prince Charming. What are you doing tonight? I know you are doing something wrong with your life. Bitch, I hope you die. How's your day? I'm sorry. So Prince Charming can go to Prince Harming rather quickly, as you can see. Um, in this case, it just took me not responding for him to go from nice guy to death threat back to apologizing. Next, we have the conspiracy theorist. Feminists have ruined the world. So this is one of my favorites. The conspiracy theorist can really, it can be any conspiracy. It could be your idea about feminism. It could be your beliefs in politics, religion. They're going to find a way to discredit what you believe in in order to get you to do something that you don't want to do. Never believe them. There's usually no facts backed up, and they're just trying to get away with something. So that's just a sample of the different types of men that I've encountered and categorized and the artwork that they've inspired. As you can see, there's a, it's the humor that is in the juxtaposition of the cruel words and the visual interpretation that really serves to highlight the gravity of the situation. I think that by exposing um, this toxic online behavior, we can really start to identify that we have a problem. And it's bigger than just men behaving badly on dating apps, which is pretty bad. But it's such an increasingly fine line between the digital space and real life. And I think this online dating behavior is indicative of a cultural issue we have with lack of accountability and toxic masculinity that we really need to work on. When I started this project a few years ago, I had no idea where, where it would take me. I just knew that it was helping me to metabolize all of the negative um, experiences that I had been going through when I was dating online. It's evolved into a platform that empowers other people to stand up to cyberbullying, and I hope inspires them to not take these insults personally. I really hope one day that I run out of subject matter.